stream. Okay, here we go. All right, hello and welcome to Mr. Brooks' classroom. We're here in game design, and today we're going to learn how to use the amazing Cinemachine, which is a procedural camera system inside of Unity. And we're going to learn how to sequence it uh, inside of Timeline, which is just a sort of like a nonlinear editor inside of Unity. All right, so let me switch over to my demonstration screen. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, so before we begin, um, I would like all the students in here, they are all following along with me, to go ahead and launch the executable build that I made. And this is going to show us what we're making here. So if you go inside of your, for you, it's going to be on the share drive. Most of them have already pulled it to their desktop, so I'm going to go jump in my Dropbox to launch it. OK, so this is the build that I exported out of exactly what we're about to make. So I'll just launch it real quick and check windowed, hit play. OK, so we're just going to make a simple animation that has two cameras following along with this animated goblin walking. OK, so let me close that out. All right, and I do have some printed instructions um, that they're going to follow along with, which I will make available um, in the description of this tutorial. And it's being broadcast on YouTube right now, so it is also being recorded. All right. So let me go ahead and make a fresh new project in Unity. Also, class lets out in like mm, less than 25 minutes, so I'm going to have to go really fast on this. And students in here, if the bell rings, feel free to get up and leave. Um, I'm going to keep going with the tutorial because it'll probably take longer than that. All right. So here we are, we're going to make a fresh new project, and I'm just going to call it Goblin Follower. Just a uh, 3D template. Let's create that on the desktop. Back here is the one I already made, so I'm going to close that out. OK, so we got a fresh project here. Um, I'm actually running Unity 2019.2 Alpha 13, but everyone in here is running 2018. Uh, all my instructions should work for both. OK, so first thing we need to do is open up the Package Manager from the Window menu. So Window Package Manager, and then inside of here, there's a few things we need to make sure that we have. Uh, number one is Unity Timeline. And I already have it in my version, and you should too. In fact, they're on version 2018, so that means it's not even going to list it right here. But believe me, you do have Timeline. Hi. We're doing a demonstration. Uh, my students leave in like 24 minutes, so I'm going to just keep going. All right. Uh, so. We got to make sure that we have Cinemachine, which is our procedural camera system, installed. So let's click that to install it. And most of these packages will just take, you know, less than a minute to install. It has to download it from their servers and import it into your project. So here comes Cinemachine, and next, <laughs> somebody's dying in the hallway. And also, we want to get the post-processing package. And this is what's going to allow us to add some filters onto our camera to do cool things like depth of field and vignettes and chromatic aberration and all kinds of cool stuff. OK, so here it comes. And actually, we'll just hit this post-processing thing right at the end, because that's just extra. All right, so as soon as this imports in, we're going to jump over to the Unity Asset Store which everyone in here should already be logged into their accounts. And for those that don't know, the Asset Store is basically like an app store for game design and animations that has literally anything you can think of to add into your projects. And we're just going to go get a, a free asset that is called Goblin. All right, And a Goblin is 
in here, and the reason I chose it is just a simple 3D character that's got animations on it already. So here we are in the asset store, and I'm just going to type the word goblin. There we go. All right, and the one we want is right here, the second one. Looks like he's got claws. All right, so we just need to hit the import button. We'll see it jump in. This little pop-up window comes up. Hit import, and that's going to bring that goblin right into our project. Do, 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 do. Here he comes. Don't worry if it looks like it gets stuck. That's okay. It'll pop up in just a second. There we go. Okay, so now we have a goblin folder inside of our project pane. Okay. So um, let's start off by just dragging our prefab goblin into the scene. So if you look inside the goblin folder, there's a prefab folder. We're going to drag the goblin prefab into our hierarchy. Okay. All right, next, I just want to reset his position so that he's at 0, 0, 0. So the little gear icon in the top right where transform is, you can hit reset position. And now he's exactly at 0, 0, 0. Always a good idea to do that when you're bringing stuff in to make sure that your coordinates don't mismatch. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play in our, in our game engine just to see what happens. Okay, so he's got an idle animation that's automatically playing, and our one main camera that's in the scene is behind him. Okay. All right, so next thing we want to do, uh, we want to select the main camera, and we want to add a timeline to it, okay? So if we select main camera, and then we go to window, sequencing, and then timeline, it's going to pop open the timeline pane. And I like to dock it down here at the bottom, because it's a timeline. And make sure your camera is still selected, and hit the Create button, okay? That's going to create a playable for the timeline and just hit save. And you'll see it added a playable timeline here in our project. So this is an asset that you could reuse later if you want to. All right, so in the timeline, we're gonna get rid of this default animation track that's on the main camera because we're not gonna actually animate the camera itself. So we do that just by right clicking on it and choosing delete. There it goes. Okay. So next, we need to add a Cinemachine track into that timeline. So we do that by clicking the Add button and choose Cinemachine track, OK? And it's empty. And next, we need to add a, I'm sorry, link the main camera. So let's make sure that our main camera actually has what we need here. Yeah, it doesn't. OK, so you'll notice in the Cinemachine track, it says none, because it's not actually linked to the camera yet. So I'll just drag the main camera from the hierarchy down here into the Cinemachine track. And you'll see it says, create Cinemachine brain on the main camera. And that's what we want to do. So we just click that. And it automatically adds a script onto our camera, which is the brain for the Cinemachine. And in a nutshell, what that does is it allows you to have an unlimited number of virtual cameras in the scene that all sort of tie into the brain of the main camera. All right, so moving on. We added the camera into our Cinemachine track. Next, we want to make two Cinemachine shot clips. Those following along with the instructions were on number eight. OK, so I'm going to right click in the timeline, and I'm going to choose Add Cinemachine Shot, OK? So that created a clip inside of here that we, we can use to edit. And I'm going to do it again. So right click, Add Cinemachine Shot, OK? So we got two clips on our timeline. 
So in each one of these shots, we need to create a virtual camera, OK? So you can do this also by going to Cinemachine and create virtual camera. But if you make the shots first, you can just create them right here in the inspector. So hit Create. Boom. So that's automatically linked our new virtual camera into that shot. We'll select the second shot and do the same thing, Create. So now we have two virtual cameras in our scene. Okay. All right, next thing we want to do is reset the position of both of our virtual cameras. So in the hierarchy, select the first virtual camera, and it, just like we did with our goblin, we're going to go up to transform here and hit reset. Okay, setting it 0, 0, 0. Same with the second cam. Reset it. All right. Um, and next thing we want to do is set both of the virtual cameras to look at the goblin's face, or just the goblin in general, or whatever part of the goblin you want to do. So all we have to do is select the virtual camera, and then I'm going to actually open up the goblin to go inside of his rig here. And I'm just going to pick like the shield, OK? Again, you can pick just the main object if you want to, but I'm being a little more specific. So I'll just drag the shield object into the look at slot of virtual camera one. And what that means is virtual camera one is always going to look right at that shield. OK, same with virtual camera two. I'm going to just do the same thing. Look at it. Look at that shield. OK. So we got both of our targets set, what both cameras are going to look at. And uh, we've already reset the virtual cameras. So they're at 0, 0, 0. OK, so next, let's go to our main camera. And what I want to do is actually, sorry, I'm going to change positions here. Let's, let's position our virtual cameras. So to do this easier, let's drag our game view, which right now is right inside the goblin. It looks kind of awkward. So I'm going to drag the game view to the bottom right over here, just so we can kind of see what that's seeing. OK. And now with uh, CMVCAM1 selected, which is our first virtual camera, we can just drag that around. And if we look at the game view, we should see it update. And if you don't, like if, if you're dragging VCAM1 and you don't see it change in the game view, hit the solo button in your virtual camera. And that will make sure that the game view is seeing through the virtual camera, OK? All right, so next I'm just going to drag this around. And you can see that it's staying focused on that shield. And this is what's so awesome about Cinemachine is that it's procedurally going to stay locked on that. And that is so good for a game camera, but also for animations. OK, so I'm going to go to his right side, framed about like this. And then I'm going to select Vcam 2 and do the same thing. Just drag it up and have it kind of right in front of him like this. OK, so something like that. All right, next, going real fast here, we're going to add a transition between these two virtual cameras in our main camera timeline. So we've already got both of our clips in here. All we need to do is, first of all, I'm going to drag Recam 1 out a little bit just so it's longer, maybe about 400 or so frames. And then I'm going to drag clip 2 overlapping the other one. Can you see that? When I drag that clip, it overlaps this one. And that's going to blend into the other camera, OK? So now if I drag in the timeline, look at what happens. It goes from virtual camera 1 to virtual camera 2. So this is so great, because then we can, at any point, just reposition either one of the cameras, and that's going to change our shot completely, right? OK, so main camera has the clip, and we've got our animation going. So now let's hit play, see what happens. Watch our game view. 
And we should see that, that default idle animation and the camera kind of zooming over to look at his shield and back. So that already looks really cool. It's a nice, smooth, blending camera animation just by setting up those two camera positions. All right. So we want to uh, have this guy more than just looking around. We want to give him an environment. So let's real quickly make ourselves a terrain. So 3D object terrain. And we get this enormous checkered pattern. I'm going to select my terrain and just enter some values here into the position so that our goblin is more in the center. So I'm going to hit negative 200 on the X and uh, negative 200 on the Z. OK. So now he's a little bit more in the center of this terrain. I'm going to zoom out some. And we're going to real quickly make this terrain. If I can get it to go. Oh, we got some light problems there. So we'll go ahead and just jump into the first tool here, raise lower terrain. And I'm just going to paint some area along the sides just to create some mountainous looking area. Don't worry about this black shadowing that's happening. That's just from the light maps. Very easy to fix. OK, so it, there's something. So now I'm going to select my goblin and frame it on him so he's got an environment. And <clears throat> lastly, I want to change his animation. So right now, he's got idle. I can just click that and change it to uh, run. Hit play again. And we should see him doing a run animation. There we go. That's cool. And lastly, we want him to move along the terrain. Right now, he's just staying in place. So best way to do that is actually with the mechanism system. So you can take advantage of root motion and all kinds of stuff. But a quick cheat for this guy, since he's using legacy animations, is to create an empty game object. Call that mover. drag the mover object inside the goblin and reset its values. So it's basically right where the goblin is. Then we can pull the mover object out of the goblin and then drag the goblin into it. OK. Now we can create an animation on the mover object just to make him move along. So we can do that just by hitting Create in the timeline, save it. So we got a mover timeline now. We can activate automatic keyframe recording. Push him back a little bit just so we get a keyframe there. Go further in time. Again, let's say about 400 frames. And move him forward like that. OK, so now it's automatically recorded that movement of the mover object, and we've got our goblin animated inside of it. So whenever we hit play, we should have camera animation blending between two cameras and following our goblin as he moves along. Now, one quick issue here is we wanted to transition to see the front of the goblin. So what we can do is on our second vCam, we can have it follow also. So I'll drag the second VCAM into the follow slot. Or sorry, I need to select what it's going to follow. So let's just have it follow the mover. So second VCAM selected, drag the mover into follow. And let's see what happens. OK, so it looks like I need to reposition our second VCAM because it's still behind him. <clears throat> there. So again, we'll just drag this forward, 
pull it up. Here we go. Down a little bit. About there. A little bit closer to him. Like that. Okay. So now it should be locked onto looking at his shield and start off here so it'll move with him. All right, play. There we go. Now we're kind of moving in front of him. <clears throat> Got a nice camera animation. Looks good. All right, so that ends the tutorial. Uh, that was kind of a whirlwind of stuff. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thank you.